Just a couple of months ago, everyone within the establishment, namely the Democratic Party establishment, was all celebrating the historic success of Rashida Tlaib and Ilhan Omar. Their electoral victories really was historic, and it was remarkable because they are the first Muslim women elected to Congress, and that matters because descriptive representation matters. Having the voice of Muslim women included in the policymaking process is important because oftentimes they're excluded, not just socially, but politically, and giving them political power, allowing them to have a say, it really does matter for substantive reasons. But, now that they're actually using their voices, well, since they're saying things that a lot of people don't like, now they're being told to shut up. Ironically, by the same people who were celebrating their victories just a couple of months ago. And they are receiving, I think, an unprecedented level of criticism from their own colleagues in Congress. And all of this really reached a fever pitch when Ilhan Omar broke a cardinal rule and pointed out all of the money that the pro-Israel lobby, primarily APEC, spends in buying off politicians in both political parties. Now, she responded to a tweet from Glenn Greenwald where he says GOP leader Kevin McCarthy threatens punishment for Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib over their criticisms of Israel. It's stunning how much time U.S. political leaders spend defending a foreign nation, even if it means attacking free speech rights of Americans. Now, Ilhan then responded saying, it's all about the Benjamins, baby. This then prompted criticism from a columnist at Forward, who responded to Ilhan saying, would love to know who Ilhan Omar thinks is paying American politicians to be pro-Israel, though I think I can guess. Bad form, Congresswoman. That's the second anti-Semitic trope you've tweeted. Ilhan then responded by saying, APAC. Now, what she's saying is factually correct. Now, understand that in spite of them trying to conflate this with anti-Semitism, that's not what it is. APAC is lobbying on behalf of the Israeli government. Nobody's saying that we're against advocacy for Jewish groups, groups that defend human rights of Jewish people, Jewish Americans, and Jewish individuals around the world. Nobody's saying that that's unacceptable. But what we are saying is that the reason why the United States takes this vehement pro-Israel stand and the reason why they literally are choosing to look away while Israel carries out this genocidal apartheid state against Palestinians is because there are lobbying groups in this country that are paying politicians to keep their mouths shut, just as there are NRA lobbyists trying to influence Republicans to not do any type of gun legislation reform, just as there are oil and gas companies trying to influence politicians to not do anything about climate change. Well, there are pro-Israel lobbying groups, not to be confused with pro-Jewish people lobbying groups, who are trying to get our politicians in America to do the bidding of a foreign government. And that's all that Ilhan Omar is pointing out. But nonetheless, this basically catalyzed universal condemnation, not just from Republicans, not just from the media, but from her own party. Not only did it become a gigantic story in the media and was trending on Twitter, but you had Republican House Whip Steve Scalise call for her to be removed from her appointment to the Foreign Affairs Committee. You had right-wing media personalities like Ben Shapiro calling on her to resign and comparing her remarks to Steve King's white supremacy, believe it or not. Nancy Pelosi demanded an apology from her. Chuck Schumer called her comments anti-Semitic, offensive, and irresponsible. And basically, everyone dogpiled on her. Any normal human being, just from a psychological level, would probably feel inclined to just cave because, I mean, that's that's a lot of pressure to face when all eyes are on you. When you're being smeared like this, I mean, I could see just from a human standpoint why you would want to say whatever you can to divert criticism away from you. So she said this, anti-Semitism is real and I am grateful for Jewish allies and colleagues who are educating me on the painful history of anti-Semitic tropes. My intention is never to offend my constituents or Jewish Americans as a whole. We have to always be willing to step back and think through criticism, just as I expect people to hear me when others attack me from my identity. This is why I unequivocally apologize. At the same time, I reaffirm the problematic role of lobbyists in our politics 
politics, whether it be APAC, the NRA, or the fossil fuel industry. It's gone on too long, and we must be willing to address it. Now, I feel conflicted about this statement because on one hand, she absolutely should not have apologized, but Again, just from a psychological standpoint, it's difficult to face that level of criticism, especially if you're not really used to the spotlight. But also, she is standing strong. She is reiterating her original point that it's not anti-Semitic to point out the fact that pro-Israel, pro-Israeli government lobbying groups are buying off American politicians. Look, there's a fundamental difference between the anti-Semitic conspiracy theory about how Jewish people supposedly control all of the levers of power and everything in society. There's a difference between that and the accurate claim that APEC, like other interest groups, have a substantial amount of influence on American politicians because we live in a system where our campaign finance laws are broken. But what they're trying to do here in criticizing her and calling what she did anti-Semitic is they're stripping away the context from what she said in order to pretend as if she's not talking about lobbying and money and politics, when in actuality APAC does spend millions of dollars lobbying on behalf of the Israeli government every single year, and furthermore the biggest donor in the country, Sheldon Adelson, is trying to throw his weight around in order to push what Mint Press News calls an Israel first agenda agenda in America. Now understand that these are not forces that are lobbying on behalf of the Jewish people. These are influential forces that are lobbying on behalf of Israel's right-wing government who's buying influence in an effort to get America to turn a blind eye to its genocidal apartheid state. And we need to be savvy here and recognize that they have a vested interest in falsely conflating any and all criticism of its government with anti-Semitism because that faux outrage is an easy way to dissuade people from speaking out on behalf of Palestinians. And we need to recognize that if you're speaking out on behalf of Palestinians, you are on the right side of history. You are on the right side of history. Because it's Palestinians who are being oppressed by the Israeli government. Not only is Israel building more and more settlements on Palestinian land, but Israeli citizens who live in Israel are treated as if they are second-class citizens. And it's actually a stretch to say that they're treated as second-class citizens because they're treated worse than that. Gaza is the biggest open-air prison in the world. They can't leave or enter without Israel's say. So what we are seeing here is rampant Islamophobia. And to say that any criticism of said Islamophobia and genocide and apartheid is anti-Semitic? Well, no, you're just pretending to be outraged because you want to hide the real injustice here, and that is Islamophobia. And I don't think it's a coincidence that the only other two Muslims ever elected to Congress, Rashida Tlaib and Keith Ellison, were also accused of anti-Semitism. So all of this righteous indignation that we're hearing is nothing more than a thinly veiled attempt to hide their own Islamophobia. They don't like that they're actually the ones who are taking a bigoted stance here. So they're trying to project and say, no, you're actually the one who are, who's being insensitive. You're the one who's a bigot. No, in actuality, if you're not speaking out on behalf of Palestinians as the Israel government carries out a genocide and apartheid state against them, you are the one who's in the wrong. And pointing that out, pointing out how... The pro-Israel lobby, such as APAC, use their influence to lobby politicians to turn a blind eye to all of Israel's human rights violations and the atrocities that they commit. The real issue is Islamophobia. The real issue is anti-Palestinian bias. And again, you would think that Democrats who were historically on the right side of many issues would see this, but the money is too good to them. People like Nancy Pelosi pretend to be so excited about Muslim women of color getting elected to Congress because we need their voices included in the conversation, but that is until they say something you don't like. Then you tell them to shut up. Democratic Party leadership tells them to shut up. So understand that this is 
disgusting. It's not real outrage. It's fake outrage with people who have a pro-Israel government agenda and they're just pretending to care about the plight of Jewish people because they're hiding behind their own anti-Palestinian bias. This is the weaponization of identity politics to be used against the left who are rightfully calling out human rights abuses and violations. And it's absolutely disgusting. And anyone who doesn't stand up for Ilhan Omar in this situation in Congress, they're really showing their true colors because she did nothing wrong. She's pointing out a fact. But that's exactly what the Israeli government wants. They want you to think that any and all criticism is anti-Semitic. Well, you can actually be nuanced and separate your criticisms of the Israeli government from real disgusting anti-Semitic tropes. Mike is a total loser, so don't hit the subscribe button, okay? And whatever you do, folks, do not hit the notification bell either. Mike treats me so unfairly.